Welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop, and I appreciate you stopping by and spending some time with me today. Today I have a special project that was requested, uh, and I want to be able to do that. And it's actually showing how I set up the X-Carve and be able to do a carve basically from beginning to end. Now I will tell you this, there are many ways to be able to do that. This is just my way of being able to set up the machine and run a carve. So let's get started. Okay, after I finished the last video, I decided to take a look at this a little bit closer. So I added some text to it, and I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and carve this. And looking through my scrap bin, I'm trying to get a piece of wood that will work. This one ended up being 14 by 11 inches. And this one it's going to be just under 19 by 10 inches. So I'm going to see what we can do to make this work. So I'm going to go back to my design and take a look based on the wood that I have available. So in this particular design, I actually have the wood that was set up at 18 by 11 and a quarter. Don't have anything that's going to be that size. So let me go ahead. I'm going to open up a new workpiece that I put together and we're going to try a different size. So what I did here and what I'm going to do is darken this whole thing for you so that we can see it right now. So what I did is I changed the material size and went 18 by the 10 and I think that's going to work. So looking at that what I had to do is just resize everything and to be able to resize it again this is the SVG file that I brought in from the Inkscape and you can see I could take it and size it any way that I want to in easel the normal way there's nothing extra that you would have to do so I'm actually pretty happy with this design and I'm gonna go ahead now and change the depth on what I want to cut. And I'll bring that down to about an eighth of an inch. And like I've done in past videos, I'm going to actually change that to 0 0.10. So there we go. So if we look over here as to how that's going to carve, we'll click on it. So now we have the detailed preview. And I think that looks quite nice. So if I simulate that, how long is it going to take? It's going to take about 36 minutes. And this is using a 60 degree bit. Now normally I use a 90 degree bit. But I want to try this 60 degree bit this time. And we'll see how it looks. In setting up the machine, I'm going to be using a 60 degree bit and it's too low. So I have to raise this up. And you'll remember you don't ever move this by hand. I'm going to come over here to the computer and we're going to hit the car button. Oops. And yes, it is a free day. Okay, and I'm going to raise this bit. So over here you can see that I'm going to raise this up. I'm going to do it high enough so that this will easily slip in. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and tighten that and get it ready. And I'm going to do that off camera. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is secure the workpiece. And I'm going to place it on here, make sure that that is square. And then I'm just going to attach these. And once I get all these attached and it's secure, we'll be ready to carve. Now it doesn't like going in that hole. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to put that right there, slip that underneath. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing around the rest of the workpiece. Now that I have all of the clamps in place, the material is secured down and it won't go anywhere. But one of the things I want to make sure of, and I'm going to double check this, is to make sure that these clamps are in locations where when the machine is running, it will not hit the clamps. So what I'm going to do is just kind of double check that. I'm going to go back over here to the computer. And we're going to close this. I don't need to move this anymore at this point. I'm going to hit simulate. And you can see the path of the machine. And right now, I have a clamp up in this area, which will be fine. I have a clamp in the very top, but I have it right on the edge, so I'll be good there. I have plenty of room on the side, and I have plenty of room at the bottom. So those clamps will be safe. Where okay, the last thing we need to do to make sure that we're ready to carve is that all the tools, everything is out of the way, that nothing can get in the way of our cutting operation. So with everything in place, I'm going to go ahead and hit carve. And we're going to follow the steps. First thing, we're going to confirm the material thickness, and it is the 0.75 inches. Now, I'm not cutting all the way through this material, so 0.75 will work just fine. So I'm going to confirm that. Next, the material is secure. We have all checked that. Next, we confirm that that is a 60 degree bit. And we're going to use the probe to be able to set the z-axis. To set the z-axis, I'm going to go ahead and move the machine over closer to the center of the workpiece. I'm just going to jog it down. I could change the setting and move it faster, but this works. Alright, so there we have it. Now then, the bit's actually fairly close. Let's see if this is going to fit. Is this going to slide underneath? No, it's not. So we're just going to raise this up. And we'll connect the Z-probe. Alright, so we confirm our position. The clip is attached. Now I have the red no contact. So all we need to be able to do is raise that up, touch it, and it's no longer red. So touch place is in place. So we can start to probe. I'm going to turn back over here to the camera so you can see that. All right, the z-axis is now set. The last step, it asks me to put the z-probe away, and I'm going to do that before I check it. All right, now that the z-probe is put away, I'm going to check that off. And now we're going to set the x-y-axis. Okay, to set the x-y-axis, I just use a little square and we're going to bring the point of this bit right over here to this zero point. So I'm going to jog the machine over a little bit more. Okay, and then we'll come down. And there we have it. Now with that set, I can check that off. Now the last thing we're going to do on the checklist, it is asking for the spindle to be turned on. So I'm going to turn that on and we'll be able to start to carve. Okay, to set the XY axis, I just use a little square and we're going to bring 
the point of this bit right over here to this zero point. So I'm going to jog the machine over a little bit more. Okay, and then we'll come down. And there we have it. Now, with that set, I can check that off. Now, the last thing we're going to do on the checklist, it is asking for the spindle to be turned on. So I'm going to turn that on, and we'll be able to start to carve. The cut settings that I use for the machine are the standard that easel has set. I do not normally go in and change those default settings. After the machine is cutting like it is, I look and see how it's progressing with the bit that's being used and how it's being carved on the wood. If I feel that I can increase the speed, I will, and that's what I did here. The default setting was 50 inches per minute, and I went ahead and moved it up to 60 inches per minute and it seemed to do quite well. I have found that the default settings are very conservative and it's quite easy to be able to increase the speeds. Okay, once completed, go ahead and turn off the machine. And a couple of notes that I want to make. This router is on setting 1 and I leave it on one for everything that I cut. There is no reason to be able to move it beyond that. The last thing that happens, it always will ask, how did the project turn out? In this case, it did turn out great. So I'm going to click on that. And now the sign is completed. Okay, the last thing that I do for every single carve is I record the date and the project that was done and how long that it took. This one estimated that it was going to take 38 minutes. It actually took 42 minutes. So I logged that and I logged the total time because it's important to be able to keep this log because it tracks how many hours that are on the brushes. Now the little over a year that I've had the machine, I have replaced the brushes once. Replaced them at about 120 hours. So right now, I'm tracking it so I can keep track of it. And at about 100 hours, I'm going to check the brushes to see how they are. I do keep a spare on hand. And I'll be able to replace them when they're needed. And I won't have a failure in the middle of a job by being able to keep this log. All right, the completed sign, I wanted to show that to you. This is right off the machine. It'll need a little bit of sanding. But... I think it looks pretty good. Thank you for watching today. If you found this video useful, please remember to hit that like button, leave a comment, and please subscribe. Until next time, have fun, be safe, take care now.